Hi everybody, my name is Angela. Nice to see you today. I am here to do a story time if you'd like. Um, I've been really thinking a lot about books and stories these days as we're all cooped up inside. It's so nice to think that somebody's idea and imagination got put inside this nice little gift for us and we can share it with each other. And um, I'm an author myself. I wrote this book called The Denim Jungle, which is a kid's picture book. Um, but I'm not here to show you that book today. I'm here because about a year ago, I went to this big meeting of a whole bunch of writers and book creators. And there were about 30,000 of us there. It was so amazing to see everybody's ideas coming to life. Um, some weren't books yet and some were brand new books. And in the process, I found this super fun book and I thought it would be cool to share it with all of you because not only is it um, a fun story, it's a true story and it has really cool art and maybe you'll learn something today. Uh, something that maybe you could even teach other adults around you. Okay, because I didn't know this before this book. So here we go. Let's check it out. It's called This Bridge Will Not Be Great. All right. And it is story by Dave Edgers and art by Tucker Nich Nichols. All right, let's get past the title page. You ever notice the title page is just a repeat of the front as the title and the author and the illustrator. This bridge will not be great. In the beginning, there was a bridge. Let's make sure you can see me here. Is that good? Okay, I'm in my son's room because it's so nice and cozy because I like to have a cozy story time, don't you? Yeah. All right. No, before that, there was a bay. A bay that led to the ocean. The ocean was the Pacific. Okay, so here's the bay down here. There's a little bit of land on either side, and here's the big Pacific Ocean. The passageway between the bay and the ocean was called the Golden Gate. On one side of the Golden Gate was the Presidio, a military base at the top of the city of San Francisco. On the other side, there were only hills, green and yellow, rising high above the sea. Beyond these hills were a series of small towns along the coast. The only way to get to these towns was by boat or by going very far north and coming back down again. It was not easy. So they're talking about San Francisco. And maybe some of you are from San Francisco or have visited San Francisco or seen a picture of San Francisco. Um, but it's basically um, in California on the west coast of the United States on the Pacific Ocean. So over the years, many have proposed building a bridge between San Francisco and these hills. But many more thought this was a very bad idea. It will mar the beauty of this land, they said. Look at those cool faces. He makes those out of uh, cut paper. I bet you could make some cool faces like that. I know you could. What's wrong with boats, they said. Hmm, well, it could be a little slow, maybe. If there's a big storm, could get some big waves. Dangerous sometimes. But this book is not about the debate to build the bridge. This book is about the shape and color of the bridge that they did build. It was 1928, and it was decided to build a bridge, and a man named Joseph Strauss was hired to design it. Originally from Cincinnati, that's in Ohio, that's where I'm from, but some of you are from Ohio. Joseph was an expert in all kinds of bridges. The first design he came up with was the strangest, most awkward, and plain old ugly bridge anyone had ever seen. This is actually what it looks like. 
People compared it to an upside-down rat trap. They thought he'd lost his mind. But he had not lost his mind. He was a scientific man, and he had designed a scientific bridge. It was functional, which means, like, it works, but it was grotesque. You know what grotesque means? Like, I don't, I don't like it. Do not like it. Functional but ugly, the people said, was not good enough. The bridge built to span this beautiful land against this beautiful sea had to be beautiful itself. Not like that design. So he tried again. This time he asked for help. One of his helpers was Leon Mosieff. I hope I'm saying that right. Leon had come to the U.S. from Latvia and had become one of the most respected bridge designers in the world. He designed the Manhattan Bridge, which is near New York City. That's a really cool one, too. Look up a picture of that. Leon designed a suspension bridge, one with swooping lines and tall towers. It would be the longest suspension bridge in the world. It would be the tallest, too. Like that. Like that design better? Hmm, they did. I like the roundedness of the cables, right? The other one was so pointy. Everyone was excited about this design. I like it very much, said this man. My aunt likes it very much, said this woman. The third person was chewing food, but seemed to agree with the other two people. That's the author being said. Chewing food, but he agreed. But still the bridge appeared to be stern in style, so Joseph and Leon asked each other, asked another person named Irving Morrow to help out. Irving Morrow was an architect. Can you see that? Sorry. And his wife Gertrude was an architect too, and together they lived not far from the Golden Gate. They designed homes and gardens, but Irving had never designed anything at all like a bridge. Nothing this big or grand or important to so many people all at once. Irving threw himself into the work. He suggested that the bridge have vertical fluting and art deco flourishes. He suggested pedestrian walkways, Pedestrian means like for people who are walking on either side of the bridge. He suggested that there be beautiful lamps along the walkways. Just about none of these things was necessary for the functioning of the bridge. They could have just built it plainer and cheaper and quicker, but Irving Morrow thought that the bridge could be both a bridge and something like art. This was a new idea to many of the people who were involved in this project. Why not make it beautiful? You can use it, but you can enjoy it too. So eventually the bridge was designed and steel workers in Maryland, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey began building the bridge piece by piece in thousands of sections. These sections were put on rail cars and then on boats. And these boats took these parts all the way down the coast of North America, through the Panama Canal and up the coast of Mexico and California. Whoa. What a journey, huh? Started out all the way over there and came down through the Panama Canal and up the West Coast. Think about all the people who helped with it and touched it along the way. All those people, all those hands. That's a lot of helpers. I like helpers. It was a long trip, but the pieces of steel did not mind, for they are inanimate objects. They're not alive, right? They're just things. They don't care. Maybe they do. Finally, it was time to construct the bridge. Men had to dive into the freezing ocean to sink the bridge's foundation. Other men, sitting high above the ocean, connected the parts. It was dangerous and complicated work. Oh my goodness. I'm glad that wasn't me. Yeah, I would not like to be up that high, but... I'm glad that there are other people who are not afraid of the, those things and that they could help. 
The workers used all kinds of tools in their work and tried not to drop them into the ocean. If you drop a hammer or a wrench from a bridge hundreds of feet above the ocean, you're pretty much out of luck. Huh. Yeah, I'm going to get that back. Seeing the bridge rise was very exciting to the people of San Francisco and the Bay Area. Look at them. Do they look a little bit happy to you? Look at their smiles. We should stop here and mention that today, San Francisco is a city of about 800,000 people. It is one of the more unusual cities in the world, given that it's built on and around 49 hills, some of them as high as 928 feet. Have you been to San Francisco? Some of these things you have to see to believe. It is a strange and wonderful, I might add, place. It is an amazing place. And if you don't live there or you haven't visited, maybe you should add it to your list someday going there because it's pretty cool. I live in Seattle and we have hills here, but not that many and not that tall. San Francisco is one of many dozens of cities and towns built around the Bay. Together, these cities and towns make up a region known as the Bay Area. The bay it's named for is the one that leads to the Pacific Ocean. Here's the bay. Here's where the bridge goes. Here's the Pacific Ocean. And here are all the little towns around there. San Francisco is just one, but there's lots of others. Oakland and Berkeley, San Rafael, Sausalito. And this bay leads to the Pacific Ocean through the Golden Gate. Remember that? And the Golden Gate was where they were building this bridge. They name it the Golden Gate Bridge, don't they? Yeah. And it was going up just fine. They estimated that it would take four years to build with thousands of workers working on it. But there was one thing that had not been decided. They had not decided what color to make the bridge. Isn't that a strange thing? that a very large group of adults would undertake a project of this side, size and not have a color picked out? But that's how it is sometimes. In this case, everyone decided that by the time the bridge was finished, they would have the color part figured out. So they kept building it. First, there were the cables. First, there were the towers. Of course, the towers were first, and they were astonishing to all. They couldn't believe it. It was so amazing. When the towers were finished, it was a day of great jubilation, joy, and celebration. This thing that had not been there before was now there. The tops of the towers were 746 feet above the water level. Sometimes the things humans make baffle even the humans who make them. It's so amazing what we can do when we all pull together, huh? Kind of crazy. While the bridge was being finished, though, people were still debating the color. And the debate over the color brought forth some interesting ideas. My favorite part. The Navy thought it should be yellow and black. No kidding, they did. The Navy thought the bridge would be safer that way so ships and planes could easily see it. Can you imagine if it looked like that? I think it would give people a headache. Make me dizzy. Hmm, look at this one. The army had a stranger idea. How about red and white stripes, they said. This is true, this is a factual book. The army wanted it to look like a candy cane for the same reason that the Navy wanted it to look like a tiger with jaundice so that it would be easily spotted by planes and ships. But most people thought these were not such great ideas. Most people thought the sensible choice would be one of the following. Black, white, gray. These were the colors of most large human-made things. Most buildings were gray or black. Monuments and towers were usually white. And almost all bridges were gray. 
Gray was a serious color. Gray was practical. Gray was dignified. Who could object to gray? A person named Irving could, and he did. Irving Morrow had been watching the bridge rise. He often rode on a ferry out near the bridge, and he loved seeing the towers rise high above the water. At that time, of course, the towers were orange. Why were they orange? Let's find out. The steel workers who had created the bridge in its many pieces had done something before they sent the pieces of the bridge onto the rail cars, then on the boats, down the coast, and through the canal, and up the other coast. They had coated the pieces of steel in a kind of paint that prevented them from rusting. They used this paint all the time. In fact, most of the steel they made and delivered came coated in the same paint. The color of this paint was a certain reddish orange. There's no frills anti-rust paint. So that's why it started out orange. Interesting, huh? Then Irving Morrow was on the ferry one day and he was watching these orange still being assembled and he thought he thought that this color was beautiful. And when Irving was asked what color he thought the bridge should be, he said, why not leave it this color? And people said, what? And they said, huh? And they said, Irving, you're nuts. No bridge has ever been orange. Who had ever heard of an orange bridge? No one had, because no bridge had ever been this color. This is true. No bridge in known human history had ever been orange. And for a good portion of the human race, because something has not already been, this is a good reason to fear it coming to be. You shouldn't fear new things though, right? That's how we get amazing new art and inventions and science. Yeah. But as the debate continued about the color of the bridge, an interesting thing happened. Other people noticed the same thing that Irving had noticed. A woman named Ada Clement noticed. A man named Benjamino Bafano noticed. Wait, Beniamino Bafano. Hope I'm saying that right, but that's a really cool name. He noticed. And as the bridge continued to rise and more and more people saw the orange steel against the green hills, above the blue water, below the blue and white sky, they said, for some reason, that looked right. That's look pretty, huh? I'm a big fan of orange myself. <gasps> look at them. Do they look happy? I think they like it. But still, no bridge had ever been orange. Orange was silly. So most of those involved figured the bridge would be gray. Gray was serious. Gray was safe. As they get closer to being finished with the bridge, though, and closer to painting it gray, Irving Morrow, who was a quiet man, who was a shy man, who was no fancy man with lots of power, began to get loud. Look at that. Loud as hats flying right off. Now, wait a minute! He wrote letters about the Orange Bridge. He collected letters from others who believed an Orange Bridge was the right thing. And his letters became louder and more insistent. He would love to see this bridge every, or he would have to see this bridge every day for the rest of his life. He did not want to grave it, bridge. This bridge, he told everyone, will not be gray. This bridge will not be gray. And others began to echo him. Some other people was thinking the same thing of his, and, and they want to speak out about it too. This bridge should not be gray. This bridge cannot be gray. This bridge will not be gray. Finally, the powers that be decided to try it. 
and after some time they agreed with Irving that though it was strange and unprecedented and bold, orange was the right color. Yay! And so it was. And so it stood. Yeah. And still stands today. You know what they call the color of the bridge? It has an official name, International Orange. But because the winds and fog and salt water in the bay are harsh, the bridge, bridge needs to be repainted year round, all, all year round, all every day throughout the year. On any given day, painters are repainting some part of the bridge. Can you believe that? Every day. They use 10,000 gallons of paint a year. It is crazy that people repaint a bridge all year. It is crazy that people repaint an orange bridge all year with all that paint. But people love to paint it, and people love to look at it. The Golden Gate Bridge, which is orange, is the best known and best loved bridge in the world. Look how pretty that is. It is best known because it is bold and courageous and unusual and even strange. It is best loved because it is bold and courageous and unusual and even strange. And it is all these things because Irving Morrow and thousands of others said. What did they say? This bridge will not be gray. <laughs> and that's the book that I wanted to share with you. Now you see why? It's kind of cool. And uh, if you want some other ideas to take with you today as you're thinking about this, you could do um, make some of these faces out of cut paper. That would be fun. You should definitely look up a picture of the bridge. Have an adult help you with that if you haven't seen a picture of the Golden Gate before or seen it yourself in person. You could de design your own bridge. You could draw a picture and make sure to pick out whatever color you think would be the best for your bridge. Or you could build one out of Legos. That would be super fun or blocks. And you could look around your house for things that are orange. If you're going on a walk today, then you could look for di how many different shades of orange that you see. So there's a lot of different fun things that you can do as a result of us sharing this story today. And I'm glad we had this time together and I look forward to more story times with you. I hope, but in the meantime, get out there and uh, maybe make your own stories. I would love to hear your stories. All right, have a great day, everybody. Bye.